Hello, and welcome to Terrier TV. I'm Katherine Barron, and today I'm here with Dr. Nolan, professor and chair of the Biology and Health Promotion Departments at St. Francis. Hello, good afternoon. How are you doing, Katherine? I'm good doing to see well. You. It's nice to see you, too. Um, just for a little background for people who don't know, well, how did you get to St. Francis? Well, I actually um, came to New York City um, from the little state of Vermont. Um, I went to school in Boston, so I first got used to a big city that way. And then I actually came to uh, New York following a man who's now my husband. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and we now have two children, that, uh, and one of them went to St. Francis. And uh, I um, wanted to find a job teaching in biology, so I found my way to St. Francis. Wow, okay. Now, biology, your trip to the Virgin Islands, can you give us just a general background um, of what it's like? Sure. Um, the trip is, uh, takes place for about a week, and the students um, take a plane, and it takes about like a whole day to, to get to the Virgin Islands because you fly to St. Thomas, and then you have to take a cab and a ferry to a little island called St. John's, which is like going on the Staten Island Ferry. Okay. It's that far away. It's not very far. And the whole island is about nine miles long, which doesn't sound very far, but the roads are a little bumpy, and we go on something called a safari, which is a big open-air taxi that holds about 20 people. Wow. Yeah. So other activities, I know they include snorkeling and hiking along with the trip? Yes, and we go to this place that's actually part of the U.S. Virgin Islands, and St. John itself, the island, is 60% U.S. Uh, Virgin, uh, US National Park. So the fact that we get to go out to um, this, you know, this beautiful island that's mostly untouched, or at least 60% of it is untouched and uh, or protected, is a very nice experience for everyone. And we go to a place, some of the students think we're staying in a hotel, but that's not really the case. And we're staying at a place that's analogous to a Girl Scout camp or a Boy Scout camp. And it's actually a camp that was put up for, uh, by the Navy when they were doing some experiments in the water in the 1940s. So very interesting place. And there are a lot of cabins, and there's a big dining area. And there are some larger buildings that we can use to have um, gatherings. There's a classroom space. There's a laboratory. Um, and it's about a quarter of a mile from the water. And we're very close to two really beautiful beaches that um, kind of look like um, half moons. And one is called Little Lamisher Bay, and the other one is Great Lamisher Bay. Oh, wow. So, and the beautiful uh, white sands and that beautiful aquamarine uh, water. One of the bays has a, uh, the marine lab is located there and it has a little dock and we can go kayaking and we collect specimens and bring them into the lab and look at them under the microscope and uh, work with some of the other researchers that are there. And the dock is one of the few places where you can get phone reception. Oh. So the students <laughs> go there at night, check, check out their phones and they're amazed at the stars because you don't really get to see that in New York City. Right. Um, so, and just a little bit more about the place and what we do, um, we have a little itinerary every day where it kind of settles into a routine where we have breakfast at 7 and then they prepare meals for us. They have volunteers at this place that do that for us. And then we'll go off either by ourselves um, as a group um, or, or with the aid of one of the volunteers from the organization that we go to called the Virgin Islands Environmental Resource Station. And they'll send a volunteer with us to either go on one of the hikes, and we hike around some of the ruins because there were a lot of sugar cane factories and rum mills um, on the Virgin Islands. They're not used anymore, but so they're kind of crumbling. So the students get to see the ruins and they hear about the history. And then it, we usually have a hike a day, and then we have at least one or two snorkels, and we have different spots. So we either walk to these places or we are carried by our trusty driver, Hamilton, <laughs> who, if we're supposed to leave at 9 o'clock, we really leave at quarter of 9 um, because he taxis people all around the islands from different resorts and things. And so we'll go to different bays and different places. Um, we go to a mangrove one day for, for the snorkeling. And 
different places for the hiking also. And it's beautiful because it's a tropical forest, but it's also parts of it are a dry tropical forest, so we see different species of cactus, which is kind of unusual to see in the middle of what you think is this lush tropics. Right. Now, you spoke a little bit of the students' reactions, but can you get a little bit deeper into that? What do they really take away from this experience? The students um, tend to feel a little bit nervous, I think, sometimes, because they're going to an unfamiliar place. And the only problem I'll have occasionally with the student is they'll feel homesick. Oh. And, but sometimes they don't even really know that they're, that they're feeling that. Um, I have the students keep journals, that's part of their requirement, and I tell them, don't put anything in there that you don't want me to read, <laughs> because I am going to read them. Um, so, but they do write that it's life-changing for them, oftentimes, because they really have never been exposed to the different fish that we see, and the different plants, and, um, and just sometimes there's uncomfortable situations, like you might see a lizard in your room, you know, small lizard. Um, or some kind of weird insect. So the, the students are not used to any of this. And um, they also mentioned uh, one student put in her journal that she had never seen stars before. So wow. that was really amazing for her and for me to know that she really was thrilled by that. So we also do something, and this is optional because some of the students are a little bit too nervous to do this, but we do what's called the night snorkel. And we have underwater flashlights, and you just see different things than you would normally see. Like they have something called spiny lobsters that aren't the same as the lobsters up here. Like they don't have uh, these big front claws. Like in other words, they're not dangerous. But we will see more of those at night. We see these things called sea cucumbers that look like a regular sea cucumber, regular cucumber, but they're alive. And, uh, and then we see interesting fish at night that you might not see during the day. And some fish are much more active during the day. And then when you see them uh, at night, they, they're, they're hiding. And then the reverse is true. Um, sometimes at night, you'll see the fish that are kind of just, you know, moping along during the day. But all of a sudden, they're scurrying around, you know, swimming really quickly. It's hard to even see them. So that's, well, that, a, nice, that's a nice experience for the students. They like that. Yeah, that sounds really amazing. Now, along with the journals, what else do the students do academically? Academically, they, um, they have to read a couple of books that I give them to read. One is actually about um, turtles, sea turtles, and about how um, they've been in decline. And then there's another book that's like a collection of um, different stories about different ocean events and things that happen, like about jellyfish and different kinds of fish that you might encounter in the ocean. And the students have to write book reports, and we do discussions. So they're, so they're graded on their participation, their journals, uh, their book reports. Uh, I give them papers that they have to read. They also spend four days in New York, and we go to this place called the Maritime Aquarium in Connecticut. They go to the Museum of Natural History, um, and they, you know, we also they can also practice their snorkeling in the pool, like if they if they like to do that as well beforehand. Oh. So, yeah. So, how long have you been doing this trip? Um, I've this will be my twelfth trip with the students, and. The first few trips that I took were actually in Central America. Um, the first three times I went to Belize, and then this, the, the fourth and fifth time I went to Honduras. But then the airfare became very expensive, because right. it is not a cheap thing to do. And the airfare went up to $1,000. And I thought, I can't afford that myself, rather, and let alone the students pay for that. So. The Virgin Islands is a little bit cheaper. I think it's a little easier since it's the U.S., you know, the U.S. Virgin Islands, too. So you don't need a passport. Um, you know, they might recommend that in the future, but right now you don't need that. And um, so the expenses are the tuition, unless you have a full scholarship. Um, the tuition is twenty-one seventy-five now for three credits. And but the rest of the expenses are probably comparable to what you would pay if you went on a week's vacation in the Caribbean. Um, it's $900 for everything included, the food, the, the housing, uh, the taxis, the, the ferry rides, um, and the, the equipment. Or you, you can rent equipment if you want there or buy your own snorkel and mask and fins. And then the, whatever your airfare is. Like my airfare was 388 because I booked it in January, but now it's gone up a little bit. But there are many flights that go into St. Thomas, so um, sometimes, you know, students will come on different flights and I just wait for them there. I meet them. Okay. There. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was curious as yeah. to how the students would go. And then when you come back to New York, when 
do you go as a group to these museums or? Yes, we go, it's part of the course. They meet at uh, St. Francis in the following week. Usually it's the reverse. We usually go the week before on the trips and then it's, that's kind of nice because then the students have all met each other and they right. know each other. But this year the place was booked. Uh, the, Vir the Virgin Islands Environmental Resource Station was, was already booked for the dates that I wanted to go. So I said, well, let, it, let me go the week before and I'll just reverse the plan of, of the trip. Wow. So that's why we're doing it that way. It sounds exciting. Everything really does. I want to thank you for being here with me today. And I'm Catherine Bear, and I'm signing off for Terrier TV.